Hi, I'm going to try to decode the mystery of NASCAR runways in the desert of Peru. I hope this will piece all the mysteries of the NASCAR lines together. The runways, why the huge NASCAR figures that don't make much sense from the ground, and the reason for all of them. First of all, I'm going to throw the uh, alien runway theory out the window. I'm not trying to say that aliens never visited Earth or had any influence in NASCAR, but I'm going to give you a more human explanation. With these runways, we can almost be certain that these are not runways for alien aircrafts. To begin with, if extraterrestrials did land in NASCAR, they would have arrived through space which requires advanced flying devices. A mile-long runway would not be necessary for an alien aircraft to land. In fact, even our modern-day aircrafts like Harrier jump jet can be used without runways. Secondly, these runways are carefully created by removing pebbles from the ground, a task that was uh, definitely done by men on the ground. If you're not familiar with the NASCAR runways, I'll give you a quick walkthrough. When you begin to fly over the NASCAR desert, you're going to see these bands stretching over miles. They come in a variety of different shapes like rectangles and trapezoids. Even a layman um, cannot help but think these are runways or airstrips. When I flew over the NASCAR desert, I had a U.S. Air Force veteran who flew with me and he absolutely categorically thought they were runways. Here's the question we need to ask. Did the NASCAR people experiment with flying? This is a very relevant question. Did the NASCAR people try to fly? History is filled with people around the world who tried to fly. We're not talking about Vimanas of India as some may claim that this is pure mythology. Let's talk about concrete documented history. In the 9th century AD, a scientist by name Abbas ibn Firnas in Spain flew by simply using an enclosure made of feathers. In 1010 AD, Almer of Malmesbury created an aircraft and flew for 600 feet before falling down. Note that the uh, late Nazca period was from 550 to 750 AD, not very far from the first quote-unquote documented flying attempts. If the Nazca people did experiment with flying, the runways become very relevant. Even assuming they did not have complex design ideas, they could have tried hang gliders or other primitive gliding devices. A glider does not depend on an engine for its flight. It can solely work on wind. Hang gliding requires even simpler materials and you can maneuver your flight with just moving your arms and legs. Now look at the runway. What do we see? The runway runs all the way to the top of a hill. The runway is designed perfectly and smooths to get rid of rough patches on the desert. Could it be because a glider would be pushed all the way over the top of the hill and then let go? Launching from an elevated level is the most common hang gliding technique used today. Remember, archaeologists say uh, wheels were not used by the Nazca or the Inca, so the ramp you see in the picture uh, would be perfect for pushing objects like gliders using logs. In fact, ramps were heavily used by Inca people to move rocks who lived farther away in Peru. In that case, the glider would have at least flown for several minutes. Also, the desert would be a perfect place for flight experiments as you won't crash into trees, houses, or other structures. We have to admit that this is a possibility as there are really no other reasonable explanations for these NASCAR runways. Here comes the second question. 
could the Nazca have been successful at flying? Remember, we talked about two guys who flew for a short time in uh, the 9th and 11th century? Both of them admitted that they didn't fly longer because their design did not have a tail. Not far from uh, the Nazca civilization, archaeologists have discovered an ancient aircraft model. You can see how it resembles a modern day aircraft. It has a solid aerodynamic design with symmetric wings, a vertical tail, and even a horizontal stabilizer. If we made a bigger, lighter model of this artifact, it could be used as a glider. Of course, this is uh, keeping things primitive by not adding engines or control systems. This model would uh, work as a glider. Look at the similarity between the modern day glider and uh, this artifact. Same features, you know, symmetric wings, a tail, and a horizontal stabilizer. If the Nazca people were, in fact, successful at flying, even if it's just with gliders, suddenly all the Nazca lines become very relevant. A hang glider or a glider aircraft would be pushed off a mountaintop, which would fly as much as the wind would support it. The Nazca desert is always, always windy, so they could have even flown for hours. And with even 10 minutes of flight, they can cover a vast area and enjoy many of the Nazca figures from a bow. With hundreds of runways all over the desert, they could view the whole of the Nazca desert, therefore able to watch and enjoy all the Nazca lines. Now, let me uh, quickly summarize the evidence that Nazca people could have flown. Number one, hundreds of smooth, flattened surfaces closely resembling modern runways have been created by men all over the Nazca desert. Number two, many of the runways are inclined, which suggests that objects were moved up and down using logs as rollers. Number three, a golden aircraft-like artifact looking very similar to a modern-day glider has been found in South America. Number four, hundreds of huge Nazca figures have been created which would make no sense from the ground but is visible only from higher altitudes. Here's my last question. Is it time to agree that the Nazca people did in fact fly? What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this new perspective and it gave you a logical explanation for the Nazca runways and Nazca lines. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.